with our pop bumpers assembly. Hang tight for another minute while we set up. Got all sorts of goodies in this box. Yes. Oh, we are live. We're live. Oh, where are you at? You didn't put the holding screen. Hey, everybody, we're live. We're still learning how to do this. <laughs> hey, check it out. Now we're holding. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't see me picking my nose right there. <laughs> How many more times do we have to do this before those mistakes are unexcusable? Oh, I don't know. At least a hundred, right? Absolutely. Okay, I'm waiting to see it. Rock, rock, rock and roll again. Someone said they saw me picking my nose. <laughs> <laughs> Lies. I don't know. You can deny it as oh, much as you want. Here we go. Okay, now it's finally updating on my end. Okay, Kyle. Well, whenever you're ready, we can start the show. Okay, I think we should do it. All right. Give us a countdown. Three, two, one. We're here. Awesome. Welcome, everybody, to episode three of Pintech Live with Kyle Spiteri. I am your live moderator, Emoto, and today Kyle is going to be disassembling his Williams Pop Bumpers on this awesome roller games we've been working on, and he's going to walk us through his entire process from taking them off, cleaning the play field, and then getting those bad boys back on there. So, Kyle, tell us where you are in your process so far. So... I have removed two of the pop bumpers so far um, just to expedite time because it is a very tedious process but I wanted to make sure that we could still disassemble one. Um, we are going to clean up the play field a little bit and then I will reassemble a few and we can show you how to do that too. Awesome. So um, I have the two upper pop bumpers taken apart now but I decided to leave the extra annoying one behind this drop target bank to be the one that we do on camera. Um, drop target bank is mounted like danger, danger close. Yeah, how do you even get into those little grooves? That definitely looks like the most tricky hot bumper. <laughs> so I'm glad you left that one for us to explore because like, I guess you would have to completely disassemble that drop target mech? Is that what's going on here? Yeah, what we're going to do is we're just going to remove the bank. It's held on with just a few screws, uh, get these lights out of the way, um, and then we'll just most likely leave it hanging for a little while um, so we can get back in here. Um, okay. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Let's work on that now really quick. Awesome. We'll get the, um, I'll bend these lights out of the way. These are the um, lights that, I think, what does it spell? War? Uh, whatever it does to whenever you drop a drop target. So these need to get out of the way so we can drop this assembly out. I can see um, one. We had a question on, from Facebook saying, were the metal yokes split in half? They weren't, and that made me really mad because that's <laughs> the reason I wanted to do this. <laughs> so I could show people what a broken yoke is. I think, <laughs> I think the reason that they're not broken on this game is there really just isn't a lot of pop bumper action. Um, I think you really kind of just have to make a pitiful shot up around the orbit to even get it to go into the pops. So 
Unfortunately, no broken yokes, but I will be replacing them with the unbreakable Gottlieb yokes. So I'll show you guys what those look like. Yokes on us. That was, our, <laughs> that was Andrew Barney's awesome joke for the day. That's Don't a good leave one. us, Andrew. It was a good. It was a good one. It was quality. <laughs> All right, one more screw here. I think one thing we'll do next week is I can um, show y'all how to take one of these Williams uh, drop target banks apart as well. Awesome. And tell us why you're doing this. Why do we have to remove the pop bumpers to clean the play field? Why can't I just like? kind of lift it up and go shimmy 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 underneath it and done because to be very thorough you need to remove the entire assembly but just like um you know the, the reason i wanted to do this was to replace those broken yokes um you know i like to do things once uh so during the disassembly process replacing those things it's just kind of a no-brainer but Unfortunately, none of them are broken yet, but we have a chance that this third one could be busted. So let's see. Oh no, it's like we hope not, but we hope so. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we yeah. are right now. Uh, Tattooing Sky, thank you for making your marker order. And uh, you're not late, you're right on time. Yeah, right on time. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna start with um, removing okay, the rod and ring from the yokes. All right. This guy here, the actual part that moves. And then we will need to remove the uh, bracket off of these um, studs here that come in through the top of the play field. Let me get the camera kind of in a spot. We're going to use a 5 16 hollow nut driver. You need to have a hollow driver to get in over the uh, screws themselves. Awesome. And it's just. To put it out there, just a reminder, I know a lot of you guys have been doing pinball teching for a long time, so you know this, but keep your game powered off and unplugged completely. Let's have no accidents here. There should be, not be any power running to your games as you're doing something like this. That's very, very dangerous. Yes, proceed at your own, uh, proceed at your own risk. I'm gonna get these guys <laughs> off. The last step and probably the most annoying step when it comes to working on pop bumpers is the um, the staple wire or the lamp socket leads. I foolishly did not get the upgrades that I like to put in these things to kind of show you guys how hard it is to get this stuff back together. It's not hard, it just takes patience, uh, but you'll see when we struggle to get all this stuff wired up back right. And you're using your magnetic tray slash bowl to <laughs> store all your screws, right? And so you don't lose them? Right now, I'm using the speaker. <laughs> <gasps> he loves to use that. Uh, welcome to the party, Rob Allman. He's here now, so we can start, guys. Uh, Hello, Letty says he, he or she misses you out in the Bay Area, Kyle. Kyle, Hi. your Bay Area friends want you back, but you're now a Southerner. Um, yes, honorary, I suppose. He says y'all a lot, too. I, I don't miss... know if you, anyone's noticed, but... <laughs> <laughs> I caught the y'all. I miss everybody in the Bay Area as well. Very much so. But I will be back to play some pinball soon, someday. Nice. And Mike Fischel is working on a Gorgar restoration right now, and he's going to be doing his pops in the next week or so. That name sounds familiar. I wonder if I have spoken to you, or maybe I've seen you uh, around. So for him doing a Gorgar pop bumper disassembly and reassembly, would that be very similar to what you're doing now, or is it a little bit different? Yeah, it'll be very. It, it's very similar. Williams kind of invented the perfect pop bumper and really hadn't changed it for a long time. Um, a lot of pop bumper parts are interchangeable. Um, I'm not going to say anything super wrong, but I know that there's a there's a difference between some of the Gottlieb AC powered and DC powered cop pop bumpers, but a lot of the Williams stuff was the same from the late seventies all the way until, um, Star Wars episode one, the last game. Right. Very last thing we're going to do is remove the, um, the pop bumper switch here. 
Um, unfortunately, we are zero for zero on broken yolks, and I was hoping we'd see a broken <laughs> spoon as well. Um, this piece here. Yeah, show us what the yolk is that you're talking about. Okay, a, I can take a that A non-broken yolk. Let me see. Let's see if I can get this in frame. To get the yolk off, you have to take this um, coil retaining bracket off. Let me move this up, sorry. This guy here. So we've got two screws on the back. All right. And get these guys off. Oh, so why does that break often? You know, they're just crummy. These things, there's a lot of action, a lot of force put onto these bumpers. Um, I'll show you what it is. We can separate the plunger from the coil. And uh, let's bring this up here. So this is oh, your pop um... bumper plunger here. You've got the coil retaining bracket. And this set of pieces here is the yoke. The yoke is what connects the plunger to the rod and ring, which is what hits the ball. Uh, can you bring it down a little bit? Oh, okay, there you go. These guys here. So these oh. kind of scissor their way on to the pop bumper uh, plunger. And then in the assembly, here's the rest of the pop bumper assembly. These guys attach into these yokes. I'm not going to try to force it, but oh, then these screw in, okay. and that is what actuates um, the rod and ring, which is now stuck because it got pushed above the body. We'll see when they all go back together. <laughs> but these yokes, generally, these metal ones, it's really thin in this spot right here, and they'll snap in half. Got you. So snapping in half from excessive ball impact. Yet, yeah, well, uh, excessive just action. Shaking. Okay. When you've got excellent pop bumper action, that will happen. Um, okay. So I think now that we've got all this apart, um, I need to come back in close. And we have to remove the last few bits of wire for the pop bumper lamp. These are very commonly stapled to the play field uh, since they do carry, you know, lamp voltage, um, they need to be kind of held in place so they can't short against anything. So these are kind of a pain in the butt to take out. I have a special tool I will show everyone that I use. But first, we're going to remove the pop bumper switch. This gives us a lot of extra room. And um, I believe we will also be changing the pop bumper spoons while we're in here. We're getting a lot of yoke jokes. <laughs> the next one's enough yoking around. I'm not and, a very yokey kind of guy. No, oh, kidding. that was a good one too. But, oh, yokes on you. Yeah, really. <laughs> to get the staples out, I have this pair of pliers. Uh, you can, you can kind of see the end. They come down to a point so I can kind of grab the staple. And since they have that angle to them, you can use that to leverage and pull one side of the staple out when you yank on it. Sometimes okay. that works better in practice than it, or uh, in theory than it does in practice, but let's we'll see, see it happen. Let's see it in action. So you wouldn't use an actual staple remover? Eh, you could. <laughs> Sometimes I'll use better. a screwdriver and just kind of pry it all up, but I prefer to not I try to not break the don't use screwdrivers as a prying tool. <laughs> what is that tool called and where do they get it? I have no idea what this tool is called. And <laughs> I got it from somebody who taught me a lot about working on pinball games. I think it might just right. be an angled diagonal cutter. Um, I'll try to look and see if I can find it because this one's getting dull and I'm going to need a new one soon. <laughs> yeah. And um, APB Enterprises said also a hook will work. So we sell this uh, hook and scribe tool set that you can use to ply those staples off. Absolutely. Thanks, thanks for posting that link in there. That's awesome. All right. 
I forgot to unsolder one piece here, so I'm gonna go get the handy soldering iron and oh, uh, plug Newt, that in. Oh, Newt House said it's called a flush diagonal wire cutter. Yeah. So now you know. Never forget it. It's a handy, handy tool. The flush cutter. I like that. Or tin snip. Oh, tin snip. That's a good one. Wait for this guy to get hot, and I'm gonna unsolder one of these patch wires. Um, Again, this, this GI mm -hmm. wire kind of sat right here. Um, and then they'll use these wires to carry voltage from one thing to another. It's kind of a mess. I kind of drew oh, yeah. some lines to figure out how to put everything back in the end, but we'll see how it goes. So, if we can get this so again, remember for anyone who's doing this for the first time, taking pictures is so vital to your process because Kyle, who is a professional, will remember exactly where that wire goes later. <laughs> but if you get called away to go make dinner or something like that, and then you don't exactly remember where you put it because you didn't get to touch your pin for two weeks later, it's good to have those picture references. Absolutely. Because one wire misplaced in the wrong spot could just lead to all sorts of catastrophes later. Not to scare you. <laughs> I'm but a little bit scared. Pictures, right. pictures are a very, very good resource. I think, I wouldn't say that I'll remember where all this stuff goes, but just doing this stuff so much, you, I can kind of tell when something looks right and when something looks kind of fishy, but uh, I make a lot of mistakes. I'm not perfect. <laughs> all right, I'm going to cheat because this has kind of got a solder blob, but if we can get this, this might not focus totally, but you can get underneath this, a uh, thin, a uh, flat metal wire, kind of push your screwdriver in, try to get it as close to the staple as possible, and then just rotate, and that'll help work one side of the staple out. Um, I try to only remove one side of the staple because if I'm real careful, I can kind of get back in there and use the other side of the staple to hold everything in place. Nice. That worked out. And say if the staple does come out completely, um, what do you suggest as far as uh, remounting that wire and so it doesn't, it's not loosey-goosey? It's best to get a staple gun and add another staple. Um, mm -hmm. On a future project, I've been recommending a lot of people upgrade to these uh, stern pop bumper sockets. Instead of using this um, flat uh, strand of metal, stern used uh, insulated wires and it makes it a whole lot easier to navigate and get these things to go in the correct place. Um, Williams cool. used these wires and then these rubber insulation bits to kind of protect the wire from shorting against anything, and it's just kind of a pain in the butt. It was definitely a mm. cost-saving measure more than anything. Uh, the stern mm. ones are the way to go. Very cool. Rob Allman on Facebook says, who has been working on pins long enough to have used Polaroids for their backup? Whoa. Pictures? That sounds expensive. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> uh, not me. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, we're going to go above the play field now. I've got everything unhooked um, underneath. So now we'll be able to dismount the pop bumper from the top side. All right. Oh, yeah. You'll appreciate this, Kyle. We think mtort on Twitch said, we think Mark was using a stone tablet and a chisel. Yeah. <laughs> that That's Paul. <laughs> if you didn't guess who put that one in there. Everyone's I... got jokes today. <laughs> okay. So now, right. now that now everything underneath has been disconnected, All right. we Should have... Should be able to pull it up, right? Yes, we can pull it up. I also need to pull up the camera, but the wire was snagged. There's two screws inside the pop bumper body, two Phillips head screws. We can remove those and the whole assembly will come up and out. Very cool, let's see it. Number two screws, number two Phillips. We'll get this, right. they're wood screws. So get those loose. And rock, rock, rock and roll again. 
I know. How can you not have that theme song stuck in your head the entire time working on this game? <laughs> it's going to be a great reward yeah. when we're all Go done. The wall. Look at that awful thing. You know, it just oh, no. surprisingly, <laughs> a not, it's not broken. It's kind of like disappointing how like good condition all of this stuff is in. Um, I'm going to replace all of it just to show you, but I guess, you know, in a cost conscious, um, you know, restoration or someone wanting to get a game just working again, all of these parts here are in good shape, just need to be cleaned up. This is nicked. Someone That's... drilled a hole here to get these, um, aftermarket lights oh, wow. up through. Can you show us? Can you bring your hand down a little bit? Yeah. yeah you oh, see that okay. Yeah, I do see screen. that Nick. Oh no. Yeah, you know. So would you replace that or just kind of slide it to the side? No, absolutely. We're going to replace it. Very cool. And I also have two choices of pop bumper skirts. Um, we can choose if we want to use red or if we want to use blue. Ooh. So um, we got a question on Facebook saying, are you replacing the ring and rod? I, I missed that. Um, Will you? Will you? Probably not. I, I have Who's new thinking? ones, but generally they don't need to be replaced. What will happen with ring and rods a lot of time when they get old is you'll be all done reassembling the pop bumper and you'll be putting a new nut you're, or putting your elastic lock nut back on here and this will just snap off. Um, it's always good to have extra ones, but these ones aren't mm. broken. Uh, they okay. could be cleaned up. I, I Come down a little bit more with your hands. Sorry. I'm so, what's yeah. up? Just uh, bring your hands down a little bit more because you're kind of slightly out of frame. Sorry. Sorry. But yeah, no, this is all, it's all oh, in good okay. shape still. They're not broken. Sometimes you'll see these press joints right here where the um, the studs come out of the ring. Those will break, but these are in good shape. Yeah, they look great. They look brand new almost. But it's a 30-year-old game. It's a 30-year-old game. That, yeah, it's pretty new. Okay, so the next step is we are going to clean this area pretty well. Um, I'm going to be placing some mylar trim platters around the pop bumper area. Uh, this game is fully mylar from the factory, um, and it does have a separate mylar section for the playfield area, but uh, just to prevent further wear and because it is such a pain to get that ramp off, do it once, protect it as much as you can, we'll be good. Right. So we can also link to, we have those Mylar pop bumper protectors as well. Absolutely do. Yeah. Let's link that in the chat. They're pre-cut. Uh, here, actually, I have one on the floor that I haven't cut out yet. <laughs> you said they're pre-cut, but you haven't cut it out yet. What do you mean? Um, well, because <laughs> since you only get about half of a pop bumper's worth of action on some of these uh, areas. Okay. The only place the ball can contact is up here or over here. Um, I'll be cutting the pop bumper mylars so they don't, you know, this part doesn't need to be applied, so. Oh, wow. Do we get to see you do that cut? It seems like you have to be very precise, right, to get that perfect circle? Um, just be careful. All of this stuff- Are you I using think... scissors or? I was uh, using exacto an X-Acto knife. knife. Okay, cool. A lot of pinball work really comes down to just like having patience. Um, if you have enough patience, you can achieve anything. Don't force things. Don't rush things. Uh, Absolutely. We're going to use our handy dandy Novus number two. We're going to take off years and years worth of crud. Excellent. Except for my novus is clogged, of course it is. All right. You didn't unclog your novus before the stream? No, I'm <laughs> sorry. Got my handy dandy pick to stick right down in there. <laughs> Always keep a pick, a toothpick, in case you need a stab a novus bottle. You never know. <laughs> okay, so this is just going to be super satisfying because this is like disgusting. <laughs> There's so much dirt. <laughs> and gross and it's just going to change color and it's going to be wonderful we have a troll trolling kyle on facebook that you you forgot the mylar at the warehouse and you had to rush back to get him but in his defense it proves his professionalism because he went back to get them <laughs> <laughs> see how fast i can get to work from my house and back again yeah oh 
All right, cleaning up. So that uh, grimy stuff on the the pastel green is that where on the paint that you can't get off, or does that come off? You oh, can it's a little get bit that of chipping. Off if you're determined enough. Um, oh wow, that's dirty. Yeah, it's pretty gross. This wear here, this is like a lot of ball swirl. Um, mm. It's a lot of like deep nicks in the clear coat um, that is just filled up with dirt. Again, I'm not restoring this game. I'm not, you know, trying to make some museum piece or something. I want a roller games I can play. I'm just going to mylar over it and it's going to be good for the rest of its life. Very cool. So we'll work on getting the rest of this crud off. When I like, when I start to know this play fields, and again, this is how I do it. There's a thousand different ways to clean a pinball machine, and this is the way I'm comfortable with, and I've been doing for a long time. I like to use Novus and then, um, you know, a nice coat of wax after it's been uh, cleaned up. But I like to get a really nice saturated area of Novus on the uh, the rag and let the novice do the work and don't you don't have to push it's not a, a physical thing it's just let the work let the compound do its job oh no we got another belt sander a belt sander will get those pesky squir swirl marks out <laughs> then if, if you wanted to get those swirls out if getting that kind of stuff out is really important to you there's a lot of guides on how to do it online um the magic eraser trick is very effective, but it's also very dangerous. It's dangerous um, as well, right? It could pull up the paint. Right. Yeah, the, the clear coat on these old play fields um, is just, it, it, it's, it's very thin. It's not like a modern play field where they try to get that mirror finish everyone wants on a game nowadays. Um, so yeah, especially on the older games, the lacquer clear coats that they used on a lot of the electromechanicals are very thin. So just, you know, do it your own discretion, do it in a corner where no one can see it, see what kind of results you get. Absolutely. Williams started clear coating their games with uh, a product, they called it diamond plate. And actually I think roller games was the first production game to get diamond plate from the factory. Uh, this one isn't, obviously, it's Mylar, but, um, yeah, it's good. That's why a lot of those Williams <laughs> games from the 90s still look really good 30 years right. on. So this is starting to look better. It looks a little nicer. The goal, again, is just to get off all that dirt, and then we'll buff off the, uh, the kind of the, the, the residue uh, that's still left with a clean side of the rag. And then we will be able to start applying those pop bumper mylar appliques. Looking shiny. Yeah, it's cleaning up nice. And you're putting a lot of pressure right now, it looks like. Yeah? <laughs> I'm trying to see how much of that ball swirl you can get out. Sometimes if you use like a really nappy cloth and your uh, rag has a lot of Novus in it, it'll start to pull a lot of it up. <clears throat> From, you know, again, the skate area is kind of still that grimy texture we used to have. And that's oh, what you, we're left with. Did you know that Funhouse has diamond plates? Yeah. Funhouse, I think, was one of the... I think Funhouse, like, came almost exactly after this game, I think. Well, a, a couple games after this. Mo every single WPC era game it has its own factory diamond plate clear coat. Which is good. It was effective. Um, you know, now that people want to restore games to look like, you know, hot rods and their mirror finishes in the paint, it's not as impressive anymore. But at the time, operators loved it because it was just powerful. It didn't crack. It didn't show wear. Right. All right. I like that. Looking good. Yeah, looking good. Looking clean. You can kind of buff it out. You can see the way that the, uh, the where you can see where the, the paint was covered under the mylar and just like the color difference right there. <laughs> what color this game should have been if it was. Yeah. Ugh. That's dirty. Yeah. <laughs> so next week we will be tackling cleaning off the entire play field, right? Yeah, we'll work on cleaning the playfield. I think we'll also work on some drop targets. 
Um, we'll rebuild like... that drop target bank. I'll admit, when I first got this game, I didn't know we were using it for um, filming, so I cheated and I repaired one of the octos on the board, but I can show you what I did. Um, yeah, you can walk us through it. I know, he just wants to fix this game so you can play it. Yes. And we're like, hold on, you're gonna now take three months to fix this game, yeah. <laughs> and you can only work on it for one hour out of every week on Thursdays at 3 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> well, so we're torturing Kyle right process, now. But... <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take one of these pop bumper mylars and I'm gonna see if I can apply it on camera under pressure and not screw it up. Oh, Michael Yan said he would love to see how to clean a 1960s uh, wood rail pin without damaging it. Yeah, that's an that's exercise in patience. Again, patience. That is the theme of the day. All right. So we've got the mylar here. They're, they're, okay. they're cut on a plotter. And I can peel it up and off. And you probably so it has can't a see sticky this it's adhesive on the back? Yes, oh, it's wow. adhesive. Yeah, okay. So I've got this ring that is very clear. <laughs> and the goal is, is that it's cut out in the center. You just need to leave enough room for all of the internals of the pop bumper to go through. And I'll lay that down like that. I like to apply one side and then like slowly work it to the other side so it doesn't get a kink. It's just like applying any, you know, decal. Um, it's like uh, applying the uh, protective covering over your smartphone. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Or, or a vinyl no decal. No bubbles. Oh, I see a bubble. No, I'm you just don't. Kidding. <laughs> don't scare me like that. <laughs> But yeah, that'll cover up the rest of the area and just prevent this from peeling up more. <laughs> yes, Ben Gasway also noticed that the rubber under the spinner looks like it's about to break. <laughs> I've been oh, staring at that thing all week. I <laughs> wouldn't like, be surprised if that it. piece of rubber is pr like 25 years old. It's it looks <laughs> very brittle. It looks crunchy, in fact. <laughs> this game, it, it's just such a pain in the butt to take this ramp off. Like all of this stuff was just super brittle and ancient. Okay, let's grab the rest of these Mylar pieces. Do you need to take off that rubber before you reinstall the pop bumper, or is it still easily accessible after you put those back in? I'll be able to get to it while it's still there. Nice. But maybe I will take it off because it's really satisfying to rip those things off. <laughs> okay. Give us a little pleasure. So I oh, already cut nice one to make sure my method would be accurate, and this uh, this will work out okay. But let's see if we can lay down the other one, and uh, I can try to cut this on camera. Yeah, no pressure. Okay, Have you no ever pressure. cut anything on camera before? No, I've never done anything on camera. <laughs> <laughs> You're Let doing great. You're doing game. great. So what I think I'm going to do is I can already see that the the diameter or the radius of this circle I need is going to be about half. So I'm just going to make a cut halfway here. Can I see? Is this visible? Kind of. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Just so you're basically it. doing that because there are other pieces that are preventing from the full circle to happen. So you need to cut into it so it fits flush. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So I'll cut it in half, or at least somewhere, so at least I can have a flap like this, because that will help me lay it over something such as, you know, kind of like this. We can kind of see, you know, Very nice. Uh, we had a Facebook comment saying, LED that game. And this game already is LED'd. But it's actually awful. very colorful LEDs. And Kyle wants to remove all the beautiful colors that someone took a lot of time to put in because he wants to go with warm white LEDs. Is that correct? It's going to have LEDs, but they are not going to be, uh, it's not going to be super colorful. Sorry. And we'll have an episode where, where we put in all what was it, 162 LED lights? We need to do that count. I think that's something I'm gonna I'm gonna work on counting every lamp in this thing, and whoever got it right gets a prize. Go ahead and take some more guesses if people want to guess how many lamps are in this game. How many lamps are in this game, everyone? It won't be a few episodes in before we reveal it. My guess was 162. I just came up with that number in my head. I think, I I think said my first guess was something. like yeah. I think my first guess was. 
in the low 50s and everyone laughed at me, so 150. I used the wrong side. There we go. That'll be great. That'll cover up just exactly oh. where we need it. Let's apply it now. The beautiful thing about LED color and lighting is it is very opinion based, right? So some people love warm white. It gives that old school factory standard feel. Other people want a uh, cool white because it makes the colors pop. Some people want to go all purple and hashtag it. Yeah, you know? purple pinball, man. Kyle, Kyle is old school. He likes, he wants to go back to the 90s when he was first born. What? <laughs> see what games look like then. I was not born in the 90s, but thank you. <laughs> I guess I do have that youthly aura around me. I like, personally, I like warm white LEDs because um, it lets the colors in the artwork show. I don't, you know, the artist, the artist uh, chose those colors because they thought it would look good. And I don't want to add a bunch of red behind what the artist put down. So that's my argument, but. That's a great argument. I actually like that explanation. That's really cool because yeah, you're trying to honor how that artist originally wanted to. Well, and also because I am an awful artist and I have no business uh, trying to choose colors, so. <laughs> Old right. man, Kyle Spateri. So our, <laughs> the way our restream is working right now is our Facebook users, I believe that are in our Facebook group, Friends of Marco Pinball, they all come up as anonymous. So just as Facebook users. So everyone that is cracking jokes and stuff is anonymous, so, you know. Yeah, make fun of me, it's fun. Old man, Kyle Spateri. I'm boring. I'm a really boring person, I know. Kyle actually likes all UV black lights. That was from uh, Lud Ludwig Synopsis. I think that's Ashley. Oh, oh yeah, no, Twitch. she knows. She knows what kind of... <laughs> <laughs> UV black light color. That'll be good. Somewhere around there. That'll keep that from getting too damaged. Now, it would be cool to like, I mean, I don't know, I think it's really rad what Stern did with Stranger Things, um, adding in that blacklight kit. Um, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it definitely adds a whole nother element to it. Yeah, it's unique. Oh, Something like no Are one could ever see machines seen that have glow-in-the-dark paint? So not UV, but like when you turn off all the lights, then it's like shining green in the background, you know? You have to like push it out into the sun so it gets power. <laughs> that is Viper night driving. Viper, yeah, oh. Viper had the UV or the yeah when the in the glow balls. Oh, the right. impossible to get UV balls. Let's see here. Now, Dan Keller here. He revealed himself, a Facebook user anonymous. Thanks for joining us, Dan. <laughs> we can use this, and I can show y'all how a pop bumper goes together. Um, I'm going to grab a bunch of pieces that I have sitting on the floor. All right. This is the fun part. Oh, Jonathan Bodge just connected with you on LinkedIn, Kyle. So be sure to add that connection when you get back. I forgot office. that I have a LinkedIn. I get Ooh. emails from LinkedIn all the time, and I did Don't not say realize that. I still had one. You need to be using your LinkedIn. It better be updated. Uh -oh. We're going to start checking that. Don't find me on LinkedIn, it's not updated. <laughs> okay, so the pop bumper consists of a lot of pieces. Let me make sure the camera's in a good spot here. So it's looking good so far, this is awesome. We got the base. Oh, wow. cool. The base is what attaches to the play field. Right. So the base, the base fits in right here. Now can I get it out? Let's see. Nope. Hold on. This is a two-hand job. There it goes. And tilt down a little bit. It looks like you're putting a lot of pressure to put it in. Does it have to fit in in a certain angle? No, it's yeah. just a, a perfectly routed hole. <laughs> Good oh, tolerances. Okay. Gotcha. So you've got your base, and then there is a little spring that installs into the base here. I think this is part 10-7. That's how wow. many things I've forgotten in life to remember pinball parts. 
Um, you've got a couple different styles of uh, pop bumper skirt. You can tell this is a pop bumper skirt because it has six holes. Uh, some games that use a dead bumper, uh, like Meteor, um, a lot mm -hmm. of older 50s games didn't have pop action. They always would have four holes. And you'll see some pop bumper skirts that have a little point on one extreme. And those are Gottlieb pop bumper skirts. Oh, okay. Those will work in any game. Almost all oh, of wow. this stuff is interchangeable. Um, but this is the correct Williams skirt. I think this game is actually supposed to get blue pop bumper skirts. So let's figure out what looks best. Um, we'll see how it goes. Either way, we've got the base here. Oh, wait, you wanted us to ask everybody, would you rather have him install the red pop bumper skirts or the blue pop bumper skirts? See, if it was me, I would do like one of each and then I would also get a yellow one. Is that <laughs> an option? Because I love throwing all sorts of different colors. So everyone, the this is a very important question. Say red in the chat if you want it red. Red is the original factory standard, correct? No, blue is. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. You pulled off those blue ones. Okay, yeah, hold up. So these are not the skirts, these are the tops. Is that, wait, there's the skirts. Yeah, the skirts, the skirts I think on the factory game were blue and they were supposed to have red caps. Um, I, that's yeah. what I was able to figure out by looking at pictures of games and uh, finding a, the, the brochure. So but... we could do red skirts and blue caps or we blue could. skirts and red caps or blue skirts and blue caps or red caps <laughs> and red skirts. I kind of think <laughs> I, I kind of think the blue and red contrast would look good. Um, it's I don't know. Everyone got... is unanimously saying blue. Blue right. skirts and blue pops. Blue on blue. Blue on blue, that's that's a blue overload. Is that what we're gonna do? I'm at the mercy of the chat. Oh, well, there is one team out. red. It's red versus blue. Red, white, and blue. Sean Cannon. It, <laughs> yes, they're, they will all have white. Oh yeah, so red, I say red skirt. I do have a blue white cap. Pop skirt somewhere. <laughs> So the way this goes, like so to... we've got the base, we've got the spring inside, and that helps center the pop bumper skirt when it's moving. Um, you can see that there are different holes and different cutouts on the sides here, and those do match up with what happens with the pop bumper skirt. Um, these skirts, when this is fully assembled with the body, the rod and ring ends up going through these two sides here, which made up mm. with these cutouts on the bottom. So the next part of assembling this is going to be okay. getting the base or the body. This is a pop bumper body. They have okay. small, small holes here and these bigger points here and they match up on the base with uh, like this. They only go together one way. It's pretty easy. Nice. So if you forgot to take your pictures, you could probably puzzle it together. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Oh, but, but see, I got it pictures. backwards, though. Hold on. Or just watch the stream again. We will be archiving this on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube. On YouTube, if you go to those archives, you can click on uh, different time codes to jump you forward. So that's an awesome feature about that. So you can see, though, I said it just goes on. It goes together one way correctly you can put it together a few ways incorrectly i showed you the holes where the rod and ring are supposed to go through if you don't have the pop bumper base rotated the right way if i were to insert this the grooves where the rod and ring ride do not have a hole for the pop bump or the rod and ring in the skirt ah. so simply <laughs> oh no kyle this is no longer your game this game belongs to the chat now uh -oh. And you have to send this game on rotation to everybody in the chat. Y'all like roller games that much? <laughs> I like roller games. I want to take it. Rock, rock, rock and roller games. And that's it. You've got a pop bumper assembly now when you put those things together that way. So what we'll do, yeah. I'm going to take this all apart and we'll try putting it together for reals on the top of the play field. Let's try it. So wait, what colors are you going with then? Blue on blue? Really? Chat really? says chat says blue, right? Yeah, but some people are like, can we see what it looks like on the playfield? 
I, I, see, now if I got to vote, I'd say put it back together stock. Blue, blue skirts with red, I like the contrast, but this isn't my game anymore, so I guess I have no say. So you're gonna go with blue and on blue? If that's what chat says, I guess that's what I gotta do. Is that not what stock is? What was stock? What was blue, the factory version? Blue and red. Blue, uh, red skirts and blue top. No, blue skirts with a red top, just like that. Uh, huh? Huh? Or that is pretty. That I've is got very the American. The old blue caps here. Or French. And again, you can't see a lot of this stuff once the ramp goes on. So I don't know. What do you think? Blue oh, and blue. It might be a little too much blue. I kind of like the contrast. Everyone's saying stock, 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 stock. All right, stock, I like you guys. Y'all take it right Blue after me. skirt, red top. <laughs> so what we're gonna do? I'm gonna go <laughs> back over said, here. We have four options. This should not be so complicated. There's actually more than four options, right? Because each one could be different. So the first <laughs> pop bumper should be blue skirts with the red top. The second one should be blue on blue, and the third one should be red on red. We could go that ridiculous. We couldn't no. finish it today, but we could do that. There's nothing you, stopping us. You don't want to do that. I want to do that. But then this isn't it. my game. No, let's go all black. I'm hearing Crystal in my ear giving a big ugh sound. <laughs> what does she, she hate? She wants you to go stock. All right. Well, stock it is then. Blue skirts, red caps. All right. I like that. <laughs> We're going to cut... I'm going to try to get this, um... That was a, a tough decision for us, guys. We all made it together. That was beautiful. That went flying. Don't do that. That's bad <laughs> form. Huh. All right. So I'm getting the old lamp socket out of the old body. All right. And again, these parts are perfectly good, uh, but they're so inexpensive. If you're going through the effort of taking this stuff apart, it's kind of good form just to replace them. Um, it's just going to look a lot better. These things are really jagged and they've got big solder blobs. I'm going to try to flatten them out before I bust out the soldering iron and melt the solder off. Oh, wow, yeah, okay. There it goes. If it was that hard to get out, it might be that hard to get in. Um, but what I was saying with those replacement pop bumper sockets, uh, mm -hmm. The stern ones, instead of using this flat uh, wiggly wire like this, it uses insulated rubber wire. And it just makes it so uh -huh. much easier to put back in. Nice. But I don't like easy. We're going to do hard. Let's do it. The pop bumper, um, the wires for the lamp come out of, hold on, let me make sure I'm right. Yeah. The wires for the lamp are going to come out on these smaller sized um, holes. You've got, this, okay. you've got the big socket here and the small socket here. The screws that hold this to the play field go through these guys. The lamp goes through this guy. It's kind of dictated by how it's drilled into the play field, but you'll see when you put them back together. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll get a close up and show you how the base goes on. Actually, let's do that now. I put the base in the play field, but like you can see, there's that bigger side. This bigger side on the base makes up with the small uh, nipple on the body, where the bigger side makes up with this, and that's where I can see the screw holes. So that's how I know oh, okay. that the screw holes go through the bigger side on the base. Let's see if I can get that back in a... Eh. Nice. Let's bring it closer. So we're going to put the spring back in here. We had a, a user on Facebook say the new metal lead sockets aren't spot welded as good and tend to break on install. Yeah, I've noticed that some of the sockets can be a little finicky. Um, even on older games, I do like to install the, the wedge based sockets instead of using the bayonet lamp sockets, just because even when you get the brand new ones, they can... Uh, you'll get connectivity problems with them no matter what. The wedge-based sockets are just so much more secure and you never have to take your pop bumper caps off to 
wiggle a lamp to get it to work again. Oh, it's kind of important to put the skirt on before you put the rest of it together. So you'll get this guy like that, and then you'll have to force these wires in through the body, the base, get this in like that. And now I'm going to get the screws that I removed from the old base and reinstall them. Nice. It's looking good. These guys here. Make sure everything's nice and centered. And we'll get that in. Don't tighten them down all the way. Tighten one in, a good couple screws. Make sure everything's centered and then snug it all down. Makes sense. Don't snug it down too, too hard. You could crack the, uh, the new body you're putting in. Know when to stop when you've just got good resistance and it's hard to turn with just two fingers. Once we get oh. those tight. Oh, okay, I can decipher. The Facebook user, if you want to see more pop bumpers uh, installs, you can check out Carrie Hardy's Getaway series episode five and uh, you can see how he did it on his getaway yeah that's good i, I watched some of carrie's uh, video it's really really nice he's got that yes. game is gorgeous too yes carrie wants to make his games look beautiful you want to make your games play most important right play is most I'm sure important carrie to me wants his games to play well too but well, you know not saying carrie's game doesn't play well it's it, just, uh, I, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a tech. I just try to get things working as good as possible. That's, that's, that's my goal. All right, let's clean this up a little bit. I suppose we could put all of these together and then fasten them all from the bottom. Um, why don't we work on that? That sounds great. I'm going to get back and we're going to pull the camera back a little bit more again. I'm going to get the rest of those parts. All right. So I'm going to grab these bases, we're going to grab these pop bumper skirts. Alright. This is just, it's a, it's, this is kind of, it's sort of relaxing when you're doing like a few of these things, but this can be super tedious on games that just have way too many pop bumpers. Um, <laughs> games like Matahari. Oh, that, yeah. that game has too many pop bumpers. Slick Chick? That has like... A lot of those are dead bumpers, so they're not oh, as annoying. Oh, they're not actual pop bumpers. Gotcha. Yeah. These, Slick Chick is a great game. Wayne Nyans is probably the greatest pinball designer of all time. Oh man, legendary. Over 100 years old and lives almost right down the street from me in Arkansas, the next city over. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. My good friend, Michael Sheese from the Pacific Pinball Museum is very good friends with Wayne and made mm -hmm. him a, uh, a birthday trophy that was a set of score reels that he brought to him that said 099. And when he got <laughs> there, he flicked them all to 100. Aww, it was so cute. cute. That's amazing. All right. Oh, here we go. We have some tips. I need to read this through. Okay, I can't reiterate how important it is to keep your hardware safe and findable. Narrowing down something like part numbers for screws is difficult if you don't know the thread count and size of the top of your head. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a good, good thing. If, if you are new to pinball repair, it's definitely good to kind of figure out... Um, why a screw is called a 632 or an 832. Um, that'll help you judge and figure out what you need to buy. Um, we can go over some hardware 101 in a video. I think that's a good thing for people to learn um, and make it a little less daunting to order hardware from us or anywhere else. All right. I believe that the screws that go into the play field, these are a number six screw. It's a number six wood screw, maybe about three quarters of an inch long. Ooh. All right, get another lamp socket going in here. It will find its way through, oh wait. 
See? Good. Making so many mistakes Can already. Doing good, you're good. How, so how long have you been working on pinball machines, Kyle? A long time. Um, I got a very massive accelerated learning experience working with um, a guy who serviced the entire San Francisco Bay Area. Um, so I was working on games and houses and doing house calls and also servicing location pinball. Um, servicing location pinball is very gratifying and you learn a lot real quick <laughs> when you need to make a game work uh and it has to work before you leave you start to learn to get pretty creative for sure and i bet that would be a great opportunity for anyone that wants to get into pinball repair to eventually work on their own games is uh find a technician you know maybe an operator that's local and ask to intern under them and Absolutely. you know help them do their and learn in the process and it's a, it's a good trade and you learn very fast that way a lot of people a lot of these guys that have been doing this for a long time you know have been doing it forever and they like to teach um it, it's always a good idea to you know the guy that comes and services your game and you now you're starting to work on it yourself go volunteer at his shop for a while his or her shop go check it out you know you'll, mm -hmm. you'll learn so many secrets you never would learn just doing it yourself yeah, or if you live by the Museum of Pinball, which is in Banning, California, they have a huge uh, pinball technician program where you can come volunteer your time and work with some very OG pinball technicians learning how to make games and help keep those 600 plus pinball machines working for their uh, several shows throughout the year. So that's a really fun place. I did a, a flipper coil install. <laughs> <laughs> That's the extent, extent of my uh, pinball repair career so far until I start working on my hard body. But a lot of great people there, and everyone in our community really loves helping each other. So, Yeah, that's the thing, no is fear. you just got to find your community. Again, too, with the advent of so many pinball museums uh, popping up around the country, too, right. you know, a lot of those are also volunteer-run. Uh, go in and see if you can help. Go clean games. Start cleaning they games. You know, once you start Volunteers cleaning up, are you always can start working welcome. on them. Absolutely. All right. Got the last one going together here. We're going to put... Awesome. Look, right on time too, Kyle, because we are almost at 3 o'clock and you're almost done with this. So we turned huh. it out pretty well. I do want to see the final shot before we, we turn it off. Unfortunately, we are not almost done. There is still a bunch of work to do under the play field too. Oh, yeah. If you lift the play field up, they're just going to fall out. Um, no, they'll right? stay in. But the, <laughs> oh. all of the, uh, well, that's good. the rest of the assembly underneath will be flopping all over the place. So maybe we can put up a supplementary mm -hmm. video. We can record putting together the rest on the bottom. Um, or I can reassemble one of them at the beginning of next week before we start working on the uh, drop targets. How long will it take you to reassemble one of them completely right now? One, it, probably not too long. It'll probably take about 10 minutes once I get it flipped up and over. So maybe we can at least fully finish one here. Yeah, let's get one. I can skip so through a lot of the minutiae. We can uh, get minutia. that whole process. Because then once you get one done, just step and repeat process, right? Yeah, it's just copy paste until you're done. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's go through that. All right, let me make sure I have all of the tools I need. We are going to bring the camera backwards before we go dive back into the game. Um, one thing to keep in mind when you uh, pull the play field up, if you install the rods and rings into the assembly, they might pop out, so just be careful. Should you tape them down or what can you do? Eh, just be careful, do it slow. Okay. All right, everything's off. We've got a clear surface. We're going to lift. Is rebuilding pop bumpers the same as an EM? This is a question from Ted Montemuro on Facebook. Yeah, this, it, it's, a, it's basically the same process. Some of them have their own little intricacies, but it's, um, it's essentially the same assembly for every era, every manufacturer. 
Okay, so he just moved his drop target assembly aside so he can access. He yeah, can I just scooted that off to the side so we have uh, room to work. And you can work. see them sticking through right now. I think I'll reassemble this top one just because we have the most room here. I'm going right. to very quickly just get this out of the way. I remember that this socket did have a little sleeve along this uh, the, the socket lead so it doesn't short out against the bracket. Oh, that's important to put back. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be blowing fuses. All right, so we'll get that. Um, what I want to show you is one thing that we didn't have the opportunity to do this time, but is important, is these pop bumper spoons. This is what the skirt rests in and what actuates the switch when the ball hits yeah. the skirt. Like this. Okay. One, on games that get a lot of pop bumper action, you'll notice that these spoons can get holes in them. You'll get a big old hole in there and these, uh, the pop bumper skirt will kind of just stick in the spoon and you'll have really sad action. Um, I did per, uh, get some new pop bumper spoons. Even though these aren't worn out, I will be installing new ones. It's as simple as unscrewing the switch stack, replacing the spoon, putting it back together. Uh, do note the orientation when you put it back together. Ah. When you get this back together, you want to make sure that this upper blade of the switch is putting contact on the uh, pop bumper spoon, uh, giving a little bit of tension. Too much tension on the spoon will keep the skirt from giving you any sort of movement or action, and too little, you'll have no action. Um, it is a bit of an adjustment. It's something that you kind of just can't do once. Sometimes you got to take it apart, you know, adjust it once or twice, it'll come out good. The other thing to keep in mind is that the holes, let me see if this is, the holes in this bracket are bigger than the screw. That means when you mount them, you Ooh. have wiggle room side to side, up and down. What you need to do is make sure that the, um, the tip of the skirt right here is resting in the center of the spoon. If it's resting off to one side or another, you might have a dead zone in the pop bumper, and that's no fun. So that, that's one pro tip to make sure you get your pop bumpers done right. Make sure you get that spoon right in the center of the skirt. Spoon in the center of the skirt. Yep. All right, we're gonna bring the camera, I'm gonna bring a couple yeah. parts over here. Give me one second. APB Enterprises on Twitch says the yoke brakes are the most common switch misadjustments in worn springs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The broken yoke is a pain in the butt. So what I like to do is upgrade those broken, uh, this Williams style yoke in its matching um, fiber piece oh. to the Gottlieb ones. Gottlieb used this uh, 90 degree oh, bend yeah. here if you can see that, it um, it increases the durability of these things to where they be just become... Bring your hands down a little bit. They become unbreakable. Let me see if I can get both of them next to each other. Oh, wow. Yeah, I see that. It's a lot sturdier. Um, the thing, when you do replace them with these Gottlieb yokes, you need to replace it with its matching fiber piece. They have to be replaced as a pair. Um, you cannot use the old Williams piece when you put these guys together, but it is a very sturdy upgraded design. Wow, and that'll allow it to last longer. Yeah, hopefully longer than the 30 years since the last time these things have been taken apart. <laughs> so I'm going to get the coil mounted back in here. The coil sleeve is okay. Now what we need to do is sandwich the, this is awkward doing it with me all hunched over, but I think I can manage. We have to get the, um, this plunger back in here with this yoke surrounding it. So what I'm going to do, oh, and to top it off, we got to get that spring in there also. So give me one second. <laughs> I kind of have to do a little bit of it like this. We're going to get the plunger in here through the spring. The fiber piece will go on first, facing away from the closed side of the bracket. So I'll slip that on. 
And then we kind of have to try to slip on this piece here. So they so close the spring, together. Does then, the spring have to be in a certain position, like, or it just kind of floats on there and that metal piece just connects anywhere on it? The spring needs to go in between the bottom oh, of okay, the so fiber it. piece and the bottom of the uh, retaining bracket. And that's what gives it its reset plungy ability. So we'll get it in like that. Oh. I can reinsert this into the pop bumper bracket. I can get the screws that held this in, little machine screws, number 632 by maybe a quarter inch or so. I'll start them by hand so I can go reach for my screwdriver. And essentially, once you've gotten here, it's a uh, reassembly is opposite of disassembly. I hate when instructions say that, but that's kind of the truth. We get this when you re uh, when you're retightening yeah. these. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you are pushing down on the top of the retainer. Get it nice and butted up to the bottom of the coil here, or the top of the coil. Oh, wow. Give it a little nice and tight, or get it snug. Inspect looks good, and then crank it down. Doesn't need to be too tight. Just like that. Um, of course, you're going to want to have your um, you're going to want to have the switch in place before you do that. But what we'll do here is I will just fox mount it. Um, we'll get these on their studs. It's kind of um, you want to try. Let me get on the other side so my arm isn't in front of the camera. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit of juggling going on right here. If you could tilt up a little bit, that'll help us kind of see where that can. Yeah, maybe it'd be better if I just set it on the ground. Oh, it's just kind of floating. What we're looking for is we want to make sure everything's nice. kind of lined up and it goes in at one time. You can see right oh, here wow. that the rod and ring is not in the yoke. So the goal is, is try to get everything in the same plane. What I'll do a lot of the time is try to get the rod and ring through the yoke first. Okay, rod and ring through the yoke first. Yep, and then you can kind of wiggle the entire assembly to look for the three mounting points you have right here. So I'll try to do this with one hand. And there it goes. You're doing great. Wow, that was easy. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes it's a... A headache inducing. Man, you, you could get hired in NASA in a heartbeat. Oh, oh no. Awesome. Then, when, well, do you get that? You'll want to gently tighten these nuts, these elastic lock nuts, down on the rod and ring. Be careful. If you torque it down like a strong man, you can snap those threads off, and then mm. you're going to be really sad. Don't over tighten. Don't over tighten your nuts. Okay, come in. Tight nuts are no fun. Get those in there like that. Get this in here like this. And now you can tighten them down. Hmm. Just, let's see if I break it. I hope not. Tighten it nice and slow until you feel it starting to snug up. And then just give it a quarter turn after that. Elastic lock nuts are wonderful because they hold themselves in place. Um, if you don't know, an elastic lock nut is a nut that has a piece of nylon or something. Let's see if we can get this to focus in. It's a nut that has a piece of nylon or some sort of a, a waxy substance at the top, and that helps keep the nut uh, from backing off. Okay. It, you see those all over pinball machines, especially on assemblies that move. Um, and yeah. Very valuable. Nice. So All right, is that it? Is that a whole pop bumper or something? It looks loose. Is it supposed to be that jiggly? No, it's, <laughs> <laughs> we've got three nuts that are missing. Um, and oh, like no. I said, rinse and repeat, go after that. And then it's a matter of getting this back on. Um, it's hard to give advice on how to hook up these wires again for the, the bulb that lights the pop bumper. Again, just be patient and take your time. Um, really make sure that you're not touching any metal to metal, which can cause a short. Um, right. But yeah. Very cool. And then you would have to readjust 
your spoon, right? Or uh, ideally, you would have reinstalled the spoon before you installed the pot bumper body. I just kind of, or the rest, this assembly. I just kind of wanted to show, you know, finish up putting it back in. Adjusting the spoon is as simple as before you put it all back together. Because that affects gameplay significantly. Absolutely. You'll want to get it in there and you will want to loosely tighten it down. And again, even with looking at the holes, which you can't see from the camera, I can move this thing no, I want to see. Move four or five there. degrees either way while still being able to tighten the screw. So again, when you put this in, you just really ah. want to make sure that the skirt, the tip of the skirt is in the center of the spoon. That way, any action from the top where it hits the skirt and moves the spoon, you get instant pop bumper action. Nice. So yeah. if I had a game and my pop bumpers weren't reacting as well or there's a dead spot, then should I just automatically assume, oh, the spoon is maybe broken or moved or shifted, and that should be the first thing I should check? It or depends on the age and the check? condition of the game. Um, I would definitely look at the Switch first. That's a very common Thing on a game, an old game, especially if you, you know, you're buying 90s or 80s Bally Williams games. You know, those games have all been played a lot. Lots of stuff is worn out. I always like to look at the cheapest things first and then go uh, work on the more complicated things after. So definitely check your switch <laughs> adjustment. Um, make sure your spoons don't have holes in them. Unfortunately, to check the spoon, uh, you eh, a lot of times it's easiest just to remove the entire pop bumper assembly, the bottom piece. Uh, and that's usually that just gives you more room to work and interact and get better angles to see where uh, You know the spoon is hitting or where the switch is closing um, Yeah Awesome, so there you have it. That's how you would Disassemble and reassemble your pop bumpers so you can clean them up clean your play fold underneath yeah. add in the mylar protectors if you'd like and possibly switch out some colors which we did not do. Well, I guess we did. We went blue on blue? No, we went factory. No, we went stock. Everyone said factory. So Everyone loves stock. <laughs> it's, uh, as you can see, it's, it's kind of a lot of work. It's, it's not hard work. It's just a lot of work. Um, you will make work. mistakes the first <laughs> time you do it. I made a bunch of mistakes just doing it right here. Oh, shucks. I have to turn that around this way, that way. But once it's done, it does feel good to have really good, tight, action pop bumpers uh it's the best awesome well thank you so much uh, that's it for our show today thank you everyone for joining us uh follow us on twitch that's going to end up being our main platform for all of our pinball content but we are currently streaming on facebook and youtube and we had a little issue with our youtube today so i'm sorry for everyone that got kicked off of that one Aww. E but sorry, YouTube. follow us on facebook our Twitch is Marco Pinball, twitch.tv forward slash Marco Pinball. And we look forward to seeing you next week where we will be doing, what are we doing next week, Kyle? Um, something Please. that doesn't take as long. We'll do drop targets. <laughs> okay. We'll do drop targets. We'll do a little bit more cleaning of the play field and hopefully kind of get it ready to start going back together. Let's do it. And if you out there have any ideas or suggestions of what you would like to see on Pintech Live, shoot us an email at marcotv at marcopinball.com and we'll see what we can do. Yeah, and maybe uh, maybe something we can work on in the next next couple weeks is we'll do a little introduction to board work. Um, I think we should install an NVRAM oh. on this computer, get rid of those batteries, so I can that show you the tools really I use to do that. Awesome, I love it. Well, thank you guys. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Sign us out, Kyle. Let's and get do back this. on those phones. What I do? You gotta get back on your Oh yeah, I gotta get back on the phone. Oh, so welcome sorry, to everybody. Our <laughs> this is Kyle. How can I help? <laughs>